There seems to be a double standard in Washington when it comes to talking to Russians. Democrats want to destroy Attorney General Jeff Sessions because he forgot he had had a couple of meetings with the Russian ambassador. But many Democrats have forgotten their meetings with the Russian ambassador as well. Attempts to reach the ambassador for comment were fielded by his wife, who said she had never met him. So he may just be a forgettable sort of person. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer claimed there was something sinister about Republican meetings with Russian officials, but then photographs emerged showing Schumer sharing Krispy Kreme donuts with Russian President Vladimir Putin. When Schumer was asked about the photographs, he burst into tears and said that the Statue of Liberty was crying because she loved Krispy Kremes so very much. Schumer is demanding that a special prosecutor be appointed to investigate any slanders against Krispy Kremes. And he says the entire Trump administration should resign to protect Krispy Kremes' reputation for deliciousness. Senator, Democrat Senator Claire McCaskill scoffed at Jeff Sessions for saying he had met with the Russian ambassador because of his work on the Senate Armed Services Committee. But tweets later revealed that she had met with the Russian ambassador because of her work on the Senate Armed Services Committee. McCaskill later clarified that unlike Sessions, who said he had forgotten those meetings, she had forgotten those meetings, so it was completely different. Barack Obama, whose Justice Department seems to have been investigating Trump's ties with the Russians, was also shown to have ties with the Russians. But Obama's spokesman said these were just official meetings during which the president promised Vladimir Putin he would weaken America's missile defenses after his last election when he would no longer have to lie to the American public. The spokesman said Obama later proved his dedication to defending America against the Russians by gutting our military and facilitating Iran's acquisition of nuclear weapons. So that's okay then. Other Democrats who said they hadn't met with the Russians include House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, who said she couldn't remember any meetings with the Russians or where she'd parked her car or what her name was or how all these dead bodies had gotten into her apartment. There was also Senator Dianne Feinstein, who said she had never met with the Russians, but now she admits she had had a few meetings with Russians, but only to discuss cooking recipes and to exchange photographs of the grandchildren and American nuclear installations. President Donald Trump, meanwhile, countered charges that his administration had colluded with the Russians during the last election by making the outlandish claim that the Democrats had bugged the phones at Trump Tower. Trump's absurd claim was made during a private phone conversation with his wife Melania and later released by sources within the FBI. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky-dunky. Life is tickety-boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky dee doo Ship shaped, tipsy topsy. The world is a bitty zing. It's a wonderful day. Hurrah, hooray! It makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray! Oh, hooray, hurrah! Not to the whole thing. All right, it's mailbag day. Yeah, 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 yeah. All your questions answered. Uh, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, you got to come over to thedailywire.com and listen to mailbag day. You could watch if you were such a cheap uh, something so, and you would subscribe for a lousy eight bucks a month. And then you would get to be in next week's mailbag, which is a little uncomfortable. But while you're there, you get to ans ask your questions. We answer them. Your life has changed. Ipso facto, whatever. I don't know what that means, but I just said Michael Knowles' book, <laughs> our cultural correspondent, Nobel Prize winning cultural correspondent Michael Knowles, his reasons to vote for Democrats, a completely blank book, is now number six on the Amazon bestseller list. So Michael Knowles is now not just a Nobel Prize winner, not just a multi-Oscar winner and a Pulitzer Prize winner. He is now a troll god. I would say <laughs> Knowles has changed. I, clearly Shapiro and I are doing this whole book thing wrong by putting words in them. I think, I think Knowles has captured the spirit of the age <laughs> inside the covers of this book. Get your copy now while uh, they're empty. Otherwise, somebody might put words in them and then they'll be... For those of you who like words, um, I have a short <laughs> Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine, the uh, world's leading mystery magazine, which it is. Uh, the new edition has a short story by me called All Our Yesterdays, and you can get that for, I think, three bucks on Amazon. You can get that copy. It is the March-April 2017 edition, but it does have words in it, so it's a little tougher than uh, Knowles's, <laughs> Knowles's book. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable that he did that. Good on him. <laughs> Like, like the man is a troll. And now we do we have to respect him? No, that, never mind. That's, I, sorry. That thought went fleeted through my head for a minute, but that's ridiculous. 
All right. So what's going on? I, I actually do want to talk about double standards. I just have to mention this this WikiLeaks thing that came out yesterday, this incredible blast of information. So obviously we have a spy or of some sort or trader in our intelligence operations who released to WikiLeaks all this material about the way the our intelligence guys gather information. And it turns out they can take over the Internet of Things, right? They can take your iPad and watch you. They can watch you through your Apple TV. They can listen to you on your iPhone. Hopefully, they're only doing this to the bad guys, but they can do it to anybody. And not only that, they can infiltrate your computer and make it seem as if the Russians had done it. So now we don't know who hacked. We don't know who fished. Actually, nobody hacked the DNC. You know, they fished the DNC. They got. They caught uh, John Podesta on a fishing expedition. He sent them his email address, and that, I think, and that's how they got into him. But now we don't even know if it's the Russians anymore. So pretty soon they're going to be accusing Donald Trump of consorting with Americans. You know, that's going to be the new thing on CNN. <laughs> CNN. How how many Americans did you talk to? And did you talk to the American ambassador? You know, well, I'm president of the United States. States. That's no excuse. Anyway, so this is everything is getting much, much more complicated. But I want to talk about, I, I really do want to talk about this whole double standards thing, because this is, this week has just brought this to a fore. When we talk about fake news, this is what it means. It doesn't mean this story is untrue or that story is untrue. It is the double standard by which things are treated. So for instance, when the guy from Time, I think it was, said the Martin Luther King bust had been taken out of the Oval Office, oops, no, somebody was just standing in front of it. You know, Chuck Todd and all these journalists just shrugged that off as if that were an incredibly incendiary thing to say that you would never have said about a Democrat in office. So now we have this thing, Trump, you know, they they hammer Trump with all this empty stuff about the Russians. They have It's all smoke, no fire. And people keep saying it's a lot of smoke. I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure there's that much smoke. You know, I mean, I, I don't know what they've got, but they don't have anything sub substantive. And Trump shoots back this thing that I was bugged. Obama bugged me in Trump Tower. And listen to Scary Spicer, uh, the uh, president's spokesman, get hit by CNN and ABC News. He's giving a press conference on the new health care bill. And they come out with this thing on the bugging. The president made a very serious allegation over the weekend. And, and I think we would all be remiss if we went through this briefing and not try to get you on camera to, to at least offer us some evidence. Where is the evidence? Where is the proof that President Obama bugged President Trump? Well, I, I answered this question yesterday on camera on your air. So just yeah. so we're clear, uh, I know this is now will be twice. Uh, but I think I've made it clear but, yesterday. I mean, but since yesterday, since yesterday, is nothing there has any changed. new proof? No, no new it's, not a question of, it's not a question of new proof or less proof or whatever. It's The answer is the same. And I think that, which is that I think the, that there is a concern about what happened in the 2016 election. The House and Senate Intelligence Committee have the staff and the capabilities uh, and the processes in place to look at this in a way that's objective. And that's where it should be done. And frankly, if you've seen the response from, especially on the, on the House side, but as well as the Senate, they, well, they welcome this. And so let's let the Senate do their job and the House, excuse me, intelligence committees, and then report back to the American people. Yeah. Will the president withdraw the accusation? Does he have any? No, any why would he withdraw it until it's, I mean, in, until it's adjudicated? That's what we're asking, is for them to look at this and see if there is. No, is it, him no about not, raising this accusation. Absolutely not. So, so he's getting the third degree, basically, over this thing. But who is giving the Schumer the third degree over his, I mean, you know, Schumer can go on and accuse Trump especially accused Jeff Sessions of essentially being a Russian spy and nothing. Nobody peppers him with questions like that. Now here, and some of this is coming from Andrew McCarthy at National Review, terrific. Uh, he's obviously a former federal prosecutor. Uh, he's going to be on the show next week, and he's the guy who put the blind sheik away. But he's now become this absolutely terrific writer for National Review. And he pointed this out. Here's a New York Times story from January 18th. American law enforcement and intelligence agencies are examining intercepted communications and financial transactions as part of a broad investigation into possible links between Russian officials and associates of President-elect Donald J. Trump, including his former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, current and former senior American officials said. So this was put out as a way of branding Trump. This story was the New York Times, a former newspaper, branding Trump by saying, ooh, they're investigating him for communications with the Russians. America law enforcement and intelligent agencies are examining intercepted communications. And so they're saying he was bugged. They're saying he was bugged. Now, if, if he wasn't bugged, you know, 
then there's no Russian story, right? I mean, their idea is there's a Russian story because the feds were investigating him. So if he wasn't bugged, there's no Russian stories. If he was bugged, they haven't come up with anything. So why was he bugged? And and listen to listen to uh, Josh Ernst. Remember uh, the last president in his name? What was his name? Uh, oh, I can't remember. He sounded like a terrorist. I can't remember. But Obama's uh, former press guy, Josh Ernest, talking to Martha Raddatz, right? And and listen, she actually, she who is a partisan reporter on the left, she actually goes after him to try and get a denial out of him. Listen to the, him weasel out of it. President Obama's former speechwriter, John Favreau, your former colleague, mm-hmm. tweeted, I'd be careful about reporting that Obama said there was no wiretapping. Statement just said that neither he nor the White House ordered it. Can you categorically deny that the Obama Justice Department <laughs> did not seek and obtain a, fi- a FISA court order? What I can categorically deny, Martha, is that the White House was at all involved in directing or interfering or influencing an FBI investigation. That, of that's any not sort. what I'm asking. What I'm asking well, is, I'm can at- you deny that the Obama Justice Department did not seek and obtain a FISA court ordered wiretap of the Trump campaign? It was a cardinal rule. Here, here's what here's the simple answer to that question is, Martha. I don't know. And it's not because I'm no longer in government. The fact is, even when I was in government, I was not in a position of being regularly briefed on an FBI criminal or counterintelligence investigation. The White House, no one at the White House, including the president of the United States, should be in a position in which they're trying to influence or dictate how that investigation is being conducted. Do you know whether the president was ever given information about surveillance at Trump Tower? What I can tell you, well, first of all, I'm not aware of all of the details of how the president was briefed by the FBI. But what I can tell you is the president was not giving marching orders to the FBI about how to conduct their investigations. He was not asking for regular updates on FBI investigations. And let me just stipulate one more time. You have to ask the FBI whether there actually is an investigation into uh, Mr. Trump. That is such weasel stuff because, again, as I said before, this is the meddlesome priest rule. You know, the president doesn't have to call up the FBI and say investigate Trump. He just has to let it be known that that would be a good thing or have some of his people let it be known and off they go. And he knows. Look, you know, Loretta Lynch was one of the most blandly sinister uh, public officials we ever had. Nothing that went on in that in her Justice Department was unpolitical. Eric Holder, same thing. It was all political. It was an absolute scandal the way the Obama Justice Department was run. And if they were bugging Trump Tower, Obama knew. If they were bug, uh, you know, that is almost guaranteed. And I'm, I'm not saying he ordered it. He didn't have to order it. So all, all I'm talking about is the difference in the way these stories are covered. CNN is basically putting up headlines that says, Trump falsely claims Obama bugged him or Trump, you know, unsubstantiated claims, but never Schumer's unsubstantiated claims or Pelosi's unsubstantiated claims about Jeff Sessions or uh, or Obama or the contacts with the Russians. Absolute trash. So it's just I'm just talking about the double standard. So now we've got this health bill come out, and, you know. This health bill, I'm of two minds about it. You, you know, it's obviously got a lot of problems. It is a little bit of Obamacare light. I, I'm not. Um, I, I wonder if maybe I, th- I think that Trump has to have a law. They have to have pass something out of that starts with this law. And I'm hoping it'll be changed. Both Paul Ryan and Tom Price, the health guy, are saying there's a three pronged process by which we're going to get rid of Obamacare. This is the first prong. I think, you know, they're going to have to do something and I hope they do. But it's got problems. So off it goes to be debated and all this stuff. But let's listen to the way. Pelosi, Pelosi goes on and she just says, this is the worst bill ever. There's nothing good about it. She said, what does she, what does she say? Uh, play, uh, play number four. You can hear what she says. Just when you think you've seen it all, the Republicans go to a more extreme place. Uh, this will make millions of people. It's a question of 10, 15, 20 million people off the, uh, of having health insurance. It will be the biggest transfer of wealth from low and middle income people to wealthy people in our country. You don't think of it that way. That's why we say to them, show us the numbers. Show us the numbers about what the impact is personally on people. Show us the numbers as to how many people will be thrown off. It is real, it couldn't be worse. If she doesn't know the numbers, how does she know it's going to be the biggest transfer of wealth? If she doesn't know the number, I mean, this is what I mean. This is like logic on the face of it. If she doesn't know the numbers, how does she know it couldn't be worse or whether it's great? We, you know, she, she has no idea. She doesn't know yet, but she just goes out and says it. But here's the thing that really gets me. They ask her about Obamacare. 
Okay, and here's what she says. This is number five. Before, you have to take it back to before, before we had the Affordable Care Act, which is what I call it, and with all the respect in the world for the president, uh, before, uh, uh, premiums were soaring if you could even get insurance, and if you had a pre-existing condition, you couldn't. The Affordable Care Act, in some instances, there will be some increases, not across the board, but in some instances there will be increases, but nothing to compare what it would have been without the Affordable Care Act. And the coverage is far superior, all of the benefits. So the goal of the Affordable Care Act was to do three things, uh, to improve benefits, to expand coverage as to who is included, mm -hmm. and to lower cost. It has succeeded in every one of those things. Every word of that is untrue, and those guys, the reporters, just sit there and listen to it. The Affordable Care Act is collapsing. And when the Republicans come out and say the Affordable Care Act is collapsing, they are only speaking the truth as the— as, as if you said the sky were blue, okay? Why is she, you know, she sits there without challenging it. No Republican making outlandish statements like that would be unchallenged, would go unchallenged, and they just sit there nodding. Hey, I gotta say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube, but, but the mailbag is coming. All your problems will be solved. So come on over to thedailywire.com and listen and subscribe.